I screened my new movie, Things Are Tough All Over, in Chicago this past Monday, October 28th, 2024. Things Are Tough All Over is a drama with comedic elements about a family struggling through the Great Recession of 2008. The election of the nation's first black president, Barack Obama, serves as a backdrop for this family story. Here's the trailer. Nicole and Rodney have it all until the bottom falls out. The signs were everywhere, but now it's official. We are in a recession. I got laid off today. <sighs> Wait, what? But as long as we have each other, it doesn't matter where we are. We can celebrate our anniversary in a cardboard box. I have to. At the Chicago screening, there were maybe 20 to 30 people in a 150 seat theater, including myself and the cast members that were in attendance, Jacqueline Childs, Alexis Aranda, and David Vo. So the Chicago screening was not the huge debut that I wanted it to be, but I definitely consider it a success and a huge learning experience. I could not have taken a course in film school that would have taught me more about film distribution. And no, I didn't go to film school. I have a bachelor's degree with honors from Ohio State in English. And I've always been interested in filmmaking. I've made one previous film, a feature length documentary called Lady Wrestler about the courageous black women who integrated professional wrestling in the 1950s and 60s. And you can catch that on Amazon Prime Video. When it comes to things are tough all over, I look at the Chicago screening as basically a film course that I took that could have been titled Indie Film Distribution 101, How to Release Your Own Movie. As I said, I learned so many valuable lessons from the Chicago screening. And in a series of videos, starting with this one, I'll unpack those lessons. One of the things that I learned is that scheduling a movie screening in a big city like Chicago can take a toll both financially and emotionally. However, seeing your work projected on the big screen in a major city is also very rewarding and worth the effort. Something else I learned from this experience is not to schedule anything that is not related to the movie in the week leading up to the screening, and that includes social events, volunteer activities, etc. Why should you keep that week open leading up to the screening if the screening has already been scheduled? Because it's easy to underestimate how much time and planning it takes to pull off a big event like a movie screening, especially in a major city like Chicago. From booking the screening to promoting the movie and trying to get people to show up, there is a seemingly endless amount of miscellaneous tasks and follow-up activities that you have to do to make the screening a success. It's also hard to anticipate any mishaps that may crop up. For example, there was a technical glitch with the digital cinema package or DCP that I sent to the theater. When you screen your movie in a theater, most theaters require you to make a DCP. And that is just a kind of a specially formatted file that will interact and fit with the theater's projector. The technical glitch with my DCP that I had sent to the theater in advance of the screening almost made me make a special trip to Chicago just to troubleshoot the technical issues and try to find out if there was some other alternative than using the DCP I had actually hand delivered the week before the screening. And the reason I did that is not only to make sure that they got it and it didn't get lost, you know, in the mail or mishandled some kind of way by a delivery service, but also to establish a rapport and kind of a working relationship with the theater staff and show my face so they could put a face with my name because previously we had just been corresponding by email. And I thought everything would kind of go a little more smoothly if I met with them face to face at least once before the screening. Of course, as an indie filmmaker with limited resources, we can't always make an in-person trip to a venue that is going to screen our film especially if it is far away from where we live. If, for example, you try to schedule a national release of your movie and screen it in different theaters around the country, it would be very expensive and time-consuming to try to visit each theater in person 
before the release of your movie. So here I am freaking out a couple of days before the screening and the theater is saying that the hard drive I gave them is not working. So what I ended up doing is what I guess I could have done in the first place is I FedEx them another external hard drive and that one ended up working and the screening went off without a hitch, without any technical glitches. But I was literally just like on pins and needles wondering if all this work I had done to get people to come out to the screening was just going to go down the tubes because of a stupid technical glitch that was my fault. Because I had actually used some free software to create the DCP rather than paying a professional post-production house to create a DCP. And as Judge Millian on the People's Court says, sometimes the cheap comes out expensive. But it worked out and the DCP I made worked anyway. And I didn't have to pay any extra money other than spending like $70 to send the backup external hard drive by Federal Express to the theater. Another additional expense that I mm, kind of actually hadn't counted on was an extra day of car rental. I have a very reliable car, and believe me, I intend to ride my Honda Accord until the wheels fall off. And it's fine for city driving, but I kind of don't feel comfortable taking it out on long road trips since it has over 200,000 miles on the odometer and it's 12 years old. So what ended up happening is when the theater staff was telling me that my external hard drive with the DCP wasn't working, I planned to drive into Chicago a day early and take my laptop and see if there was some kind of way that we could play the movie from my laptop. Now, fortunately, I ended up not having to do that because the additional, the extra backup external hard drive that I sent by Federal Express ended up working out. But... I had changed my reservation for my rental car to include an extra day so that I could drive into Chicago early to try to work out this technical glitch with the theater. And it, as it turns out, I didn't need the rental car for an extra day. The theater was able to use the hard drive I sent by Federal Express. And yes, that extra day of a rental car, which as we all know, anyone who has rented a car knows that it's very expensive. But I sort of just look at it as that's the cost of doing business when you're holding a big event like this in a city that I don't live in. The week leading up to the screening was kind of insane for me. As I record this video on Sunday, November 3rd, 2024, the nation is in the midst of one of the most consequential elections in the history of our nation. Now, feeling the need to be a good citizen, I had signed up to be a campaign volunteer and there were also a couple of get-togethers with family and friends that I had scheduled for late October, thinking that by that time I would be done promoting the screening and it would just be smooth sailing, and that turned out to be a mistake. So if I had it to do all over again, I would have still volunteered for the campaign because it's important as a citizen to do your part. And of course, staying in touch with family and friends is a very necessary and very noble thing to do just as volunteering is but i would have cut off any activities that didn't have to do with the movie screening by mid-october so i would have left that last week of october that last full week of october to handle any last minute mishaps like the technical glitch with the dcp like i don't know the rental car company saying, we don't have any rental cars and we're going to cancel your reservation and me having to scramble and find some other rental car. That part didn't happen. I'm just saying there are so many hypothetical things that can crop up at the last minute. So it makes sense to kind of leave the week before your movie screening, leave it open, don't schedule anything because I ended up having to let down a couple of friends and family members for get togethers I had scheduled. And, you know, I ended up feeling guilty about that on top of all the nerves and um you know kind of outright fear about whether the screening would turn out right don't put that kind of guilt and put that kind of weight on your shoulders leave some cushion leave some time at least a week leading up to the screening for you to take care of business and handle any last minute mishaps and if no last minute mishaps crop up then great you'll be in all the better of a situation to kind of sit back relax and enjoy the screening so why did I schedule the screening so close to the election? Well, my thinking is that because things are tough all over, 
deals with issues that are on voters' minds, like the economy, like families struggling to make ends meet. I thought with the timeliness of the subject matter of the movie, that would result in a lot of media coverage and not only sell tickets for the screening, but also build buzz for the upcoming release of the movie on streaming services. But the problem that I ran into is that I was so busy with the miscellaneous activities of trying to promote the screening that I did not have enough time to contact the media in Chicago. I only ended up contacting a few radio stations and newspapers and didn't even have time to kind of follow up with them after my initial cold email and try to set up interviews. And I didn't even get around to contacting podcasts and local TV news in Chicago that may have been interested in interviewing me about the subject matter of my film, which definitely relates to the upcoming election that we're all kind of on pins and needles about. Another lesson I learned was about how complex the logistics of holding an event in a big city can be. So on the morning of the screening this past Monday, October 28th, I got up in the wee hours of the morning, like around three or four o'clock, so that I could drive to Chicago. It's a five hour drive from my city, Columbus, Ohio. You actually gain an hour driving to Chicago because Columbus is on Eastern time and Chicago is on Central time. But even gaining that extra hour, I did not want to have any possibility of being late of there. You never know when there's going to be an accident or construction will cause traffic to move really slowly. So I kind of wanted to kind of build in a cushion for me to be able to arrive in Chicago and not be rushed and not feel more nervous than I already am because of some traffic mishap beyond my control. So as it turned out, I arrived in the Windy City around 12.30 p.m. Chicago time, which gave me plenty of time before the screening that evening at 7 p.m. to get myself situated, to check into my hotel, to park my car, etc. Speaking of parking, I ended up paying to park several times because I was in search of a parking space that wasn't crazy expensive. So when I first got there, I parked in a parking garage. It was like $25 per hour. And I was like, I'll just park here. Then I'll go on foot and find a cheaper parking space near the hotel where I was going to check in. It's a long story, but I ended up paying to park several different times, wasting money doing that. And I actually ended up getting a parking ticket because I wasn't really paying attention and I was so nervous and hairy, even though I had given myself plenty of time to get situated, I was still so nervous that I ended up kind of making a, what ended up being a kind of a silly mistake. So the silly mistake that I made was that when I finally found a fairly affordable parking space on the street in Chicago near my hotel that I had booked, I accidentally entered in the license plate of my own car instead of the rental car at the parking kiosk on the street. So I was really surprised when I came back to my car after checking into the hotel to find a $70 ticket because the parking hadn't even expired at that point. And then looking at the ticket, I was about to call the number for the city of Chicago and cuss somebody out. And then as I was waiting for someone to answer my call at the city, I happened to look at the license plate number that the, uh, the, the ticket had recorded. And I realized I had entered in the wrong license plate number. So I ended up with a $70 ticket and it was my own damn fault, as Jimmy Buffett would say. And this is why people who perform in different cities, like musicians and comedians who go on tour and go on the road, they have road managers or tour managers, or even just a personal assistant who handles the logistical issues of hotel and parking and that kind of thing. Because when you're so focused on the event itself and trying to make the event itself a success, logistical issues can really pose a headache and can distract you from the most important work of making sure that your performance or your movie screening or what have you is a success. So I would recommend maybe if I had it to do all over again, hiring a virtual assistant who could handle some of these technical, logistical issues, or maybe asking a close friend or family member if they could help me out and kind of help me with some of the logistical issues like booking the hotel and calling the hotel or emailing the hotel and finding out where the best place is to park so that I wouldn't have ended up with a $70 ticket that was a totally avoidable mistake if I hadn't been so 
nervous and so kind of distracted. Now, I've traveled a lot in my life. And normally when I'm traveling, like just for pleasure, just to go on vacation, I'm pretty good at the logistical issues. But once again, as I said, I was so focused on organizing the screening and trying to get people to turn out to the screening that I kind of had to push the, the logistical issues kind of to the back burner until the last minute. And I didn't really have enough time or didn't leave myself enough time to plan the trip to Chicago in the most efficient and organized kind of way. The hotel that I booked was maybe 15 or 20 minutes away driving from the movie theater where the screening took place. And my thinking in booking the hotel room was that the screening might get out late, that the Q&A might run long, and that I might end up hanging around after the screening, after the Q&A, and talking to people. And, you know, I just thought, I don't want to be a zombie trying to drive back to Columbus at 11 o'clock at night or midnight or what have you. And why not just get a hotel room and, and crash there and drive back in the morning when I have fresh eyes and then after a good night's sleep. So what ended up happening is that I did not need the hotel room. That was another expense that was a total waste of money because after the movie screening, there was a brief Q&A with the audience and the cast members and myself. And then right at nine o'clock when my reservation for the theater, I had booked the theater from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., almost like clockwork without me planning it, right at 9 p.m., everyone left the theater and I had plenty of time to get in my car and drive back to Columbus. And I could have like just stopped at a rest stop along the way, grabbed a cat nap, and then arrived home before daylight. I wish that's what I would have done instead of wasting money on a hotel room. But again, lesson learned. And an interesting thing that happened is that, again, I was so kind of distracted and not so much nervous after the screening, because at that point the event had already gone on and I was kind of like, I could kind of like exhale a little bit, but because I was so focused on, I needed to get back to Columbus to be on time for my day job the next day. Cause I hadn't taken the next day off, which was probably another lesson learned. I ended up programming the wrong address to the hotel into my phone. It was like on North Michigan Avenue and I programmed in South Michigan Avenue or something like that. One or the other, I transposed the direction ended up being on the road for like an hour, an hour that I could have spent driving home to Columbus, because it's only, as I said, a five hour drive from Chicago to Columbus and vice versa. I ended up in some neighborhood with fancy mansions and luckily no one called the police on me as I sat in my rental car trying to figure out my mistake. So I got back to the hotel, it was like 1130-ish. And um, after all of the wrong turns and the going on the highway when I didn't want to drive on the highway at night and trying to find a restaurant or store that was open where I could get something to eat because I had skipped dinner. And that's another thing. It's like you think a big city like Chicago, there'll be restaurants or places to get something to eat on every corner. And that was not the case, at least not the area in near Grant Park where my hotel was. It was like they rolled the sidewalks up. It could have been downtown Columbus, which is dead after like 5 p.m. after all the workers go home. And luckily there was a convenience store near the hotel where I was able to grab a sandwich and some potato chips. Other than that, I would have went hungry if I hadn't found that convenience store. And as it turned out, I only used the hotel room for a few hours. I used it to change when I arrived in the city, change out of the clothes that I had driven from Columbus in to a kind of a nicer business casual outfit for the screening. And then I slept for maybe three or four hours tops before I had to wake up really early again and get on the road to be back to Columbus in time for my day job. Again, lesson learned. So there were a lot of little miscellaneous expenses that I didn't anticipate, like the parking ticket that kind of added up. But the good news is, is I'll know what to do and more importantly, what not to do when I screen my movie in a city where I don't live. When you're an indie filmmaker, so much of self-distribution you learn it through trial and error. And there are success stories of indie filmmakers who have gone before us that we can look to. One of those success stories is Ava DuVernay. If you're not familiar with her background, I would definitely Google how she went from being a publicist in Los Angeles 
to a filmmaker and she successfully self-financed and self-released her first two indie films, which led to her, you know, going on to be the first woman to, or first black woman anyway, to direct a hundred million dollar movie. And of course, all the success she's had since then. And as inspiring as a success story like Ava DuVernay and others are to us indie filmmakers, there is no one size fits all cookie cutter approach to self-distribution. A lot of these lessons you have to learn on your own, once again, through trial and error and by doing. You can watch YouTube videos, you can listen to podcasts, you can read books on filmmaking and film distribution, you could take courses, you could even enroll in film school and get an actual degree in filmmaking. But self-distribution in the constantly changing film industry these days is something that can only truly be learned through experience, through hands-on experience. And that's exactly what I had with this experience screening my movie in Chicago. A few weeks before the Chicago screening, I came across a quote by Nelson Mandela that put me in a positive frame of mind to help me to be able to accept whatever might happen. And that quote is, I never lose, I either win or I learn. And I learned so much from the experience of screening the movie in Chicago, and I consider it a win as well. I came across that quote from Nelson Mandela when an author and motivational speaker named Harlan Cohen came to my alma mater, Ohio State, and spoke. He presented a workshop. And reading Cohen's book, Win or Learn, That was so helpful to me in the weeks leading up to the screening. In the book, Cohen expounds on that quote by Nelson Mandela and how you can apply it to your own life. And I highly recommend reading that book, Win or Learn by Harlan Cohen. For anybody in any walk of life or any industry, it's really, really helpful to learn how to not take what might be considered failure or rejection personally and to learn from it so you can move forward. In future videos in this series on the experience of screening my new movie in Chicago, I'll break down all the expenses, like how much I actually spent renting the theater, the methods I used to promote the screening and put butts in seats, and incidentals, like things you wouldn't necessarily think of, like event insurance that contractually with the theater I was required to take out. Perhaps most importantly in future videos in this series, I'll explain why I chose to have the screening in Chicago in the first place, other than the fact that the story of Things Are Tough All Over is set there. And I'll kind of go into more detail about why I chose the path of self-distribution. I hope you'll tune in to the next installment in this video series about the lessons I learned and am continuing to learn about indie filmmaking and distribution. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please leave a comment, share it, and subscribe to my channel.